Welcome back to Wickerson Studios. My name is Michael Wickerson, and I'm working collaboratively with a fellow that uh, has taught me quite a bit on Grasshopper. And we're excited about bringing the parabola into the plugins for Grasshopper. And not saying it isn't there in other forms, we thought it might be easy to start with the expression node and show you how transformations can affect pretty much any function. We just so happen to be choosing the y equals x squared function so we can have a pretty interesting parabola to begin with. So the dominion. 001. Uh, the first thing we build is a we'll build a small node plugin for a graph, uh, which is right here. And I'm a sucker for preferences and blue, so we will just tuck that over to a nice deep blue whenever we well maybe not deep blue. Um, so when I select that, you can see that that's basically the little tiny node that will pop up a, a Cartesian plane for you that you can play off of the real lines and real numbers in the x and y direction. And then on that, we'll build a very simple script. The graph of a certain function f, let's call it f at x, uh, which will be x squared. Uh, we'll run with the domain to start from, actually, I should say the domain is going to run. I thought I changed this already. We'll run the domain from negative. Well, this one's only running from negative 2 to 2, because that's what the graph looks like right now. And the range is going from 0 to 4. So that's accurate. Um, we're going to sketch the graphs of the following functions, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i, j, k, or j, and specify the ranges and domains of each one, which you can see at the beginning of the node system. So to build this one, I've got a little bit of labeling going on here. It's a little bit parametric, but it could be a much simpler script if you look at it. It's basically going in and setting up a domain to a range through the function uh, expression of x squared. I've labeled it by y equals x squared in f and x. And then I take it to point, uh, other points, to curves and lines, which are helpful in identifying, uh, drawing out this picture for us. And then the points themselves, I can uh, play off of the information as it slides. And I could input the data of the x and y attributes. And you're left with some very nice little curves. There they are indicating what's happening. And the only thing I have here is a pufferfish plugin, which actually uh, extrudes, uh, extends the line, extrudes it, or offsets the line, I should say, in both directions. We could set it to one, and then you wouldn't need the pufferfish plugin if you just use one out of the curves tools up here on the vanilla. So if it's not running for you and that one comes up negative, don't worry about it. You don't have to download pl uh, pufferfish to make it work. So we're looking at a function, and that's how it states. Uh, the function is simply written f, and x, uh, f uh, x squared. Uh, to produce the parabola. What happens when we start thinking of that parabola? Let's add a integer. And what I'll periodically be doing here as I enable this is I'll be adding uh, other variables to the script. So this one I'm adding b because b is actually, I'm going to treat it as any integer or float if you want it to be or um, to the function after that, not within the function. So we're taking the parabola and we're adding two to it. So you can see exactly what happens. It jumps up in the vertical direction, comes back down to where it was if we set it to zero. That's not too hard to figure out. And if we wanted to go so far as to just copy and paste that, uh, you can see it's pretty cumbersome in the nodal scripting in Grasshopper, but it's easy to understand and see what you're doing and make some nice visuals. Uh, you can always script the center portion down into one node, kind of the way the expression node is working. So we'll disable that one, and then we'll put on uh, f at x minus b. And that's very similar, obviously, in enabling it. But you can see we're setting it in a negative direction as we go. So if we slide b up, we're going to move it down farther. And you can still have a little bit of finesse in moving around that uh, function. And if you want to load that one up with the other one, you can distinguish them because of that tool that's there. So I'm not sure what's going to happen in the optimization of these nodes, but you can see basically where I'm going with it. So let's take a look at the next set of uh, a couple of interesting functions and what we do to it. And I think I'll load up two at once. Well, maybe one at a time. What if we amplify the function, but we don't amplify the x within the function? Let's see what happens. And we do that, and we actually get a pretty nice stretch on it. Of course, I converted it over to a instead of b, and I'm using an integer value. And you don't have to. Like I said, you can use decimal to whatever decimal place you want. Uh, that's nice. And then the other one is just to multiply it by negative. Uh, one. You have to be careful how you're scripting this in here. You have to be a little subtle and careful, but you can see us, we're taking the original uh, parabola of this one and putting it into a negative, and then I can multiply uh, nothing because I'm actually only multiplying by negative one. There's no b within the equation, so technically I don't even need that there um, to get the value of that function. And that's it. And you can see the curves coming out, and you'll see what we're actually coming out with, which should be uh, a negative, well, there's all the data, but it's not the lines. We need the curve. Where's the curve head at? 
Oh boy, where did I? Oh, it's down here, obviously. Um, and there it is. It's put in the negative direction. So you're you're basically getting your head around what's happening in transformations because of a little bit of math of what you're playing with. Let's go to the next two and see what happens. Well, what I'm doing is I'm bringing the b variable into into the actual function x plus b, x minus b. So one of them of which, which is, it's worth taking one of these on. It's actually the, the negative of what you might expect. So if we disable that, if we're adding b to this, we're actually minusing it in that direction. So as I add more to it, I'm actually sliding it off to the left as opposed to sliding it off to the right. So that's something to think about as you read a function. This will become in very handy, and you'll recognize it when you start making invertible uh, curves and, uh, and uh, mirroring them around axes or bringing them into the y equals x axis. So the reverse of that is to go in here, hit enable, uh, unable, the plus b within the function. Um, I think I turned it to disable, and there you go. You've got the same slider happening on the b, and we're going to add to it, but as we add to it, we'll be moving that one because it's negative off to the right. Okay, so pretty simple. A, B, C, D, E, F. Let's go into G and H. What's actually happening here? Same system. Like I said, a little cumbersome until you bring it into one single node. Let's enable it. And what we have here is something a little hard to see. <laughs> so I think what I'll do is I'll come in here and I will disable that and you see we're dealing with this function here which is pretty powerful shift what have i multiplied it by well what i've done is i've actually multiplied the function before squaring it so i'm going to bring that back down to like one and you'll see that it still blows it up into a pretty powerful direction from the original one so a times x and then squaring that it's going to do a lot more than a times the function x squared so that's a little different than when you're actually squaring the a within the function itself. And that's going to be written, uh, obviously, f at ax. And then the same thing if I do a negative on that. Let's just uh, get rid of this one. And let's slide this one on as negative x. And as we enable that, you're going to see that it's very similar, well, you would think, to the negative x, but it's not. Because if you square a negative function, it's going to come up positive. So I don't have a b value in here. So if I made that a, a b, you would see that, it, or an amplifier in a, it would make a difference. But once again, we don't need that because we're hard coding that script in. So basically, it stays exactly the same as it was. Uh, so we learn very quickly with a parabola like this that negative x is the same as f and x. Something interesting to think about. Uh, but really keep in mind where you put those constants. It's going to have a major effect on what your graphs or what your geometry ends up doing. And we don't have to just bring in f and x uh, being x squared. We can bring in any curve we want beforehand and think about the transformations that are happening to that. That can get a little more complex, but if you stay with the beauty of math, it's not too bad. Uh, the last ones, I'm actually dividing by c. You can say, well, what does that do to the function? We bring that one in and do an enable, you can see it's, there's a widening of it. There's a real flattening out of that parabola. So as I bring in C and divide by that, as I amplify that, obviously the denominator gets bigger, then this is going to get flatter and smaller all the way down until it tries to flatten right out. And it's also going to amplify back in the other direction as I bring it back to where it was. So there it is. Pretty nice. I've extended the domain range of that, and I'm plugging in X divided by C, then squared. And you must keep in mind that it's not operating at c equals 0 because we cannot divide by 0. And then if I do everything at once or just have a little bit of funky play on this, try and understand this is really where you end up going with your scripts. Plug in something uh, a little more complex that has a lot of different variables. Let's use a, b, c uh, in this one, enabling it. And now we have an awful lot of sliders to do some manipulation. We have 1 minus a multiplied by the entire function that has been had b minus from it and divided by c before it's squared. So that becomes a pretty interesting function to think about how you're scripting that. And there we go. We've got a little bit of manipulation of this original function as we slide that a around and amplify it, which would seem in a negative direction because of that 1 minus. We can slide it off the left, we can slide it off the right if we end up making these very make these a little bigger, and we can flatten it and we short it. So what I would suggest doing is going in here, putting it in the rational numbers, bringing your count up to say 4, making it minus, and I like to balance that out, minus 4 to 4. And let's just take that data and do that one twice. And then with a control shift, you can bring that data up into that one, that one into that one. And the only problem there is C is not labeled C anymore, which I want to uh, shift because it's not going to affect anything in your number sliders if you change the names of these. It's just going to mess up what you're doing. And then let's change our B to here. 
and because we invented a couple of new nodes let's just take those two and put them in the group add to group and there we go we've got one two three so how can we start playing with this node there we go shift it over all the way to there pretty good parametric control of a parabola uh, if you think about it as a function and getting control of functions you're going to totally empower yourself computationally into what you actually end up making within grasshopper very exciting stuff uh, it ends with something as uh, beautiful as that the rest of it like i said was just labeling where you can go and you can start manipulate around and have a reading of where that is and i like to live up the original curve and actually i don't think i like the puffer fish at, at attachment i think i'll reduce it back down i just wanted to see that line distinguished from the other lines making up uh the graph and what we're actually reading so that's a pretty simple thing now that's a big grasshopper script it looks like but that could be tucked into actually one node up on the uh, plugin uh, from from a graph which could be worked into it as well so this entire system can be nested into a nice c-sharp or gh python node which is what we fully intend to do so keep your eye on the dominion we are moving forward and we're th doing things like f at x the much needed uh, x squared parabola node in grasshopper brought to you by the dominion thanks very much for watching